Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog and welcome back to another episode of my series Behind the Raw, where I take you with me onto my computer and talk you through my work, my edit and my thoughts on a particular image. Now, this week, it's the turn of my second day that I had with Bernard and we had an incredible road trip. We left his home and we went all around the different areas from Connemara, from Mayo to Connemara and Mayo to Connemara. So we were back in and out, in and out the whole day long. And I got some phenomenal photographs on that day. Now, I wanna talk about one particular image here today and it's the first one actually that I'll feature on this series and it's one taken by drone. So it's using the DJI, it's the Mavic 3 Classic and it has the Hasselblad sensor with a four third sensor. Now, it is really good from a quality point of view. I don't think it's up to what I've experienced on my own main camera, but nonetheless, it's a far, far, far improvement than what I've had in the past on previous drones. So I'm gonna talk you through here on the computer, my thoughts, my edit on one image taken of the drone of this beautiful area of Clue Bay. So let's go. Okay, so here we are now. This is the image I'm going to edit through. And as you can see, it is a stunning scene. Now I took the drone here and I sent it up because I wanted to get a view out of all of these islands. And the sandbank worked perfectly as well as a leading line. Now behind me is a place called Croke Patrick and people from a pilgrimage point of view climb to that all throughout the year. And a lot of them do it actually, believe it or not, in barefoot. But obviously I wasn't going to do that on that day. Now I'd seen photographs of this from people that had taken it up on top and I wondered what it was going to be like if I was to go there with my drone. Now with the drone here you can see all of these stunning 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 islands that are there and again like I said with the sandbank and I really like also that I've got a good bit of visibility into the water. Now when I took this shot actually I can see here this one is at one third of a second f10 ISO 100 and it's at 12.29 mil so 24 mil equivalent um, and this is where I think it's interesting because when I set this up, you can set it up that it's going to do three different types of shots. So you're going to get one shot underexposed, one shot overexposed, and one shot in the middle. Now, this is the shot that's in the middle, and I'm going to concentrate on that shot from the edit point of view here. The edit in this actually is going to be pretty straightforward, but the reason I picked this is because I want to do a bit of peak pixel peeping. So if I start to have a look in here at the detail, you can see on this that there is a bit of detail on the sides of these islands that are here and also into the distance moreover and also along here as well there is this lighthouse that you can just make out as well in the scene and moreover then as well when I look down here you've got that sandbank below but remembering this is a raw file so it is going to be quite flat in its own profile and we'll have a look and see at the before and after and I can show you exactly what this can turn out like you've probably seen any if you've seen the episode but I'll talk you through my edit I suppose in relation to it anyway so one of the first things that I'll always do on this is uh, have a look and say okay is my horizon straight now the advantage with the drone is that the gimbal is going to automatically level the horizon provided that you have it taking off on a level ground and I did on this scenario anyway so I'm going to look and I'm going to say okay what do I want to change do I need to change my temperature from the white balance point of view I don't think so I think that's going to be fine but I do want to just bring down my exposure here slightly so I'm going to drop it only a small amount so 0.5 I think is what I'm going to aim for here and already you can start to see that there's more detail now coming out into this image and that's only just by changing the exposure Next is the highlights. So I can either take my highlights all the way down here, which is the only highlights is really in the sky. So I could take it all the way down, but I don't want to take it all the way down. I want to bring it down ever so slightly. And I want to try and adjust that later, particularly with some masks and some layer masks and such also. So I'm going to drop this down here very little, probably maybe minus 16. I think my shadows as well, I want to bring those down because I want to have more of a darker contrasting image. So if I bring my shadows down here already, you can start to see some of the detail coming out in that image. And I'm going to drop it down here quite considerably probably or maybe yeah, around what one minus 40 on my whites then I can bring back up this and I think this is where it gets interesting because I could do the same with my shadows and my highlights but I want to do it here with my whites so I'm going to increase my whites and I'm going to probably bring them up to the opposite of what I brought down from the shadows and I'm just on the borderline here as you can see in this area of exposure um, highlighting so and blacks I don't need to change that because I've done that with the shadow now 
This is where another tool that I use quite often, which is dehaze. And you know, if you add dehaze, you can take it down here, it makes the image going back to where it would have been. But if you add in dehaze, it now sharpens up that image for you and gives you a lot more contrast. So I'm going to add quite a considerable amount of dehaze here, I think, to this, because I want to kind of darken it down. It's probably up around with 29, and already you can start to see some real nice details coming out in the image, but of course, it is lacking any sort of punch. Now, also as well, you can see that there's some fields here, and this is quite interesting because these are islands that are off the coast here but this one has fields that are tilled so there must be a route from the mainland over to here otherwise they got to bring their equipment over on boat which I find quite interesting and fascinating at the same point but as we look at this anyway you can see now we're starting to see a bit more detail already in the image and incidentally over here is the area towards Ackle Island so I would have been there back in February last year with uh, Dodd and if you've seen that episode you know that we were absolutely frozen out of it was Baltic but nonetheless back to the thing that we want to deal with today. Now, if I want to look at the color here, I can go down and I can do a number of different things, I suppose, really. I can actually say, okay, how do I want to affect that color? I can go in and say, all right, I want to look at my vibrance. And if I bring my vibrance up here, it's going to affect the overall aspect of the image. And bringing it up by 36, I think is nice. But what I do want to do is I want to go down here into calibration and I want to look at the blues because it's blue in this water that I want to really affect more so than anything else. And if I go into that here and I take my saturation on my blues, I can bring those up here and now you see that the image becomes a lot more colorful. And I think that's where you can get some interesting results. I think the 30 is probably a bit too much. I'm going to probably have it around 17. Um, and I'm not going to change anything else because it's only the blues that I want to look at from that point of view. Now, I think interestingly enough as well, when I look at this image, I could be done. But like I said, I want to deal with this in a slightly different way. I want to bring in a lot of different uh, masks. So. With that in mind, what I want to do next is talk you through my next step from a mask point of view. So if I come over here and I want to say select the sky. Now, if I select the sky here, you'll see that it's kind of create a bit of a haze here in relation to that. There is an interesting thing that you can do on that as well, is that you can say, okay, right click on this or three dots and you can say intersect mask and then you can intersect it again with the sky. And what that's going to do is it's going to take away that little bit extra. I don't know why it does it, but it does it. And it now helps that to be a lot cleaner and there's no bleed over onto the mountains. And on that point of view then, what I can do is say, okay, I want to change my exposure on the sky. I want to bring that down slightly, but also what I want to do here is I want to introduce more dehaze directly into the sky. And now you can start to see that the detail is coming out on that here overall. It's kind of a dark and moody sky, more so than anything else. Now, the next mask that I want to add here is I want to add one down towards the very end. So I'm going to I'm go in here and I'm going to add a linear gradient. And I'm going to take that holding down shift and I'm going to drag it up from here. And I want it quite soft because I want to affect the bottom part of the image here. And now what I can do is start looking at that and saying, okay, what do I want to do with that image? So I want to change the temperature here slightly. So I want to make it a bit more blue. And now you can see that the image here has more of a pop and it's not getting the differences we would have had earlier on. And I can then come down and say, okay, let's try slightly increase the saturation. Not a lot, only a small amount is all I need to do from here. Now, looking at that image here, I think overall, if I give you a F for full screen, that's going to give you a look at the whole image in its entirety. And you can see now there's a lot more detail coming out here on these islands that I have. And also I love the fact that the light was fleeting through that as well. And you can also see some boats here in the distance, but it was only going to be possible to get this shot if I had taken the drone. So yeah, an interesting shot for me if I bring it back into fit screen here, by the way, also when I was composing the shot, I was very particular because I didn't want to cut off any of the islands on the left hand side here or on the right hand side. So I think where I placed it, I like the way the sandbank is leading in here now. And what I've done overall is I brought more punch out and I brought more effect into the image. Now, like I said from the outset, let's go back and let's have a look at the before and the after. So if I press the backslash on the keyboard, that's the before and that's the after. And you can see there's a lot more detail now, a lot more punch coming out in that image overall. Final thing, as I would always do, is go in here and say, okay, I'm going to have a look for denoise, which is AI denoise. Now, I noticed with the sensor as well, it is quite good. It doesn't really be affected by noise, but nonetheless, I think this is going to help it. If I have a look here, you can see there's a bit of noise in the water, it's been removed. If I look at this, a bit of noise in the water here, it's been removed. And if I look over here on this one, bit of noise in the water, it's been removed. Now, 
I hit that do its work. But the interesting thing for me from a drone point of view is that it needs to be a wide open vista shot. It's not going to get you something which is extremely sharp, you know, because uh, you're so far away from it. It's about looking at the bigger scheme of things, the bigger picture. But it is a far cry from what I've had on my previous drones. And this for me is definitely a step up in that regard so thank you very much as always for joining this episode hope you've enjoyed this particular episode episode 21 would you believe in this series um join me next week for i don't know what so um i was going to take a couple of days off uh, but i said okay no i won't i'm going to head off out and i'm going to see what adventure i can come by before it comes to next sunday's episode i normally have a number of images in the bag but i've been quite busy trying to organize which is the thing i want to talk to you about next my workshops so if you have a look at my website i'll put a qr code actually here i'd love for you to go check it out let me know in the comments below if you're something that you're of interest in now what do you think of the website or what do you think of what i've done and what i've created i think i've come up with a very interesting and good concept from a group workshop point of view and i'm really excited now to launch them so people who are on my email newsletter will have gotten information on this already and if you want to get that information again head over to my website join my newsletter and you get early access to any of the updates that I would have. And this is one in particular that I'm extremely excited about. And like I said, I can't wait now to see the feedback and hopefully meet you guys in the field and take you to some stunning locations. Perhaps not this location, but there's plenty of other locations that I've chosen and it's going to be excellent. So thank you very much as always for your continued support. I hope I'm lucky enough for you to join me on my next episode next Sunday. If it's your first time on the channel, please hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment, and until the next time, schlange fall.